Hello and welcome to the 14th video in this series, Making Simple Flappy Robin Using Cocos 2DX JavaScript. Last video then, you remember we got the labels finally on the screen with the game over, click to start, start label, and also the two labels for the score and for the high score. And what we want to do in this video, the final video in the series, is actually set this up to um, present the correct numbers rather than zero and 10,000 like they are here. To do this, we actually need to use the scored variable that we uh, created in the tube sprite in tube.js. And this is what we'll use to keep track of our score or whether we've scored or not. We've got the scored um, set to false in, uh, on initialization and also inside the stop and also when it's originally created. And this will be set inside game.ds to true. If I just go into a little schematic I've made here, in our game we have the robin bouncing across the screen or well, it's actually bouncing up and down. There's an illusion it's going across the screen. We have the tube scrolling in from right to left. What we want to do is the tube as always starts as scored is false. And we want to say that when it gets past the robin at a certain point where the line is here, we want to set the scored value of that tube then to true. So when the tube goes past the X of the robin, then instead of being scored false, it'll become scored true. And what we need to do is we need to say at what point of the tube goes past the X to be declared as a, a scored true. In our case, what we'll say is that the X point plus the width of the tube, if that is less than the X of the robin, then that tube will be classified as having been scored. So back into the code, we need to implement this logic. And it's actually relatively simple to do, um, which is nice for the last video. The first thing we need is a, a couple of variables inside our game layer to keep track of the score and the high score. I'll just paste those in in here. And I did notice as well, actually, in the in the, in the end of the last video, I spent the I spelt the high score label hish score label. I'll leave that as it is. Obviously, that's a little bit incorrect. It doesn't matter for the game itself. It's not very nice. Um, a bit late to change it. Um, and what we need is we, we need a, a function to actually keep the score label and hish score label updated. So I'm going to put in a new function above add label and call that uh, set score labels. And inside here, we can uh, we can then set the actual uh, strings on our label so they present correctly. It's relatively simple to do, as I'm sure you know from the last video. Now we'll just say score label dot string is equal to then this uh, score dot two string, and then do exactly the same for our hish score label as well as it's been uh, creatively named. So once we've done this, we need to call this set score labels function um, at the start when we initialize to set everything to zero, but we also need to set it each time we finish a game. So we need to set that also inside our re-enable after game over. And actually, also inside the re-enable uh, after game over, we need to reset our original score to zero because we've just finished a game. And before we do that, of course, uh, we need to be careful that we actually set the high score as well, because otherwise it will just always be zero. So we'll just ask uh, above setting a score to zero that if the score we've managed in the last game is bigger than the high score, then let's set this score then to uh, the, the high score, sorry, to the score. And the last thing we need to do then at the bottom here is we can set our score label so we update the high score correctly and also reset our score label to zero. OK, so the very last thing we need to do then is go up into the onTick function. And in there we need to find the logic that we used already to loop through all of the tubes to find whether we've got a collision or not. And we can see that logic somewhere in the middle here. Here it is. And now what we want to do is do exactly what was described in the in the schematic. We want to take um, one of our tubes, if, it, if it's active. If it's inactive, we'll ignore it. And we already do that inside this loop. And we'll just add in an else now. And inside this else, the first thing we'll ask is if the tube is actually scored or not. Because if it is, then we'll ignore it because it's already been scored. And now what we need to do is apply this logic of saying that if the um, bounding box uh, x plus the bounding box 
width of this tube. and is less than the uh, X point of the robin. And just, I think actually, I think actually I need to drop in get bounding box here as well. I can't exactly remember whether it works or not. So I'll put it in anyway, because that will work. So using the logic that we showed in the schematic, if this condition then is true, then we can set the scored value of that tube to equal to true and we can increment our current score in this game with the value for scoring a tube which is one um, and is inside it's a constant inside game manager so we can always change it easily in case we want to reuse it or anything i think it's down the bottom somewhere there it is k tube score and finally all we need to do is call set score labels and we're done that should be all we need to do in the code complete so I'll just go back into the browser and refresh and start a new game and hope to not crash into the first tube, which will be a little bit embarrassing and see if we actually get the scores being recorded. So go into the first tube and we can see, yep, we've got one over the next one. We've got two and now it's caused a crash and we've got game over and hopefully the high score will set to two. It does. Good, so that looks like uh, it's all working then. That's actually the final video of this series. Um, thanks very much for watching. Thanks very much for all the comments and everything. Um, I will be doing more series. I've got lots of ideas for new things to do. If you'd like anything in particular, please let me know or any particular direction. I was thinking of moving into Angular and some, some web applications as well because I've been doing a lot of that um, at work recently. It's quite interesting. Um, so any questions, comments, criticisms, always welcome. Uh, thanks very much for listening and watching. See you in the next one.